grateful for what the Lord is doing. Are you ready to get into the Word? I'm ready to. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 13 and reading a few verses of Scripture. And with the Lord's help, I, like I said earlier, I hope that by the stroke of noon when, when the broadcast is uh, just about done that we're going to be different. Amen. We're going to be different. We're going to be encouraged and strengthened in the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13, a few verses of Scripture. <clears throat> We're going to pick up in verse 15. And the Bible says, By Him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifice God is well pleased. And looking at that verse 15 let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. It said that it is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. And with the help of the Lord, we'd like to try to speak to us this morning about don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. There is a sacrifice of praise which is basically your thank offering. Out of the Greek, we find that it, that's what it's called. So when we lift up a praise, it is a thank offering that we are giving unto the Lord. Our praise is the giving thanks. Our praise is our confession to the name of God. And that's what that scripture said, giving thanks to His name, lifting up his name and giving that praise and confessing and knowing that he is our Lord and Savior. He's the one that is worthy of all of your praise. Thankful for those that, that uh, you know, lift us up and encourage us and speak well of us. Oh, but I, but I am reminded that all praise belongeth unto the Lord. I understand we give honor where honors do, but oh, let us give that praise unto God because it is him that has made us and formed us and fashioned us into the vessels that we are today when we submit ourselves to Him. Uh, I was curious about when was the first time praise was mentioned in the Bible. And it was mentioned in Genesis chapter 29 and verse 35. We find Leah, the wife of Jacob. Uh, she's conceiving her fourth son at this time and she named him Judah. Uh, Genesis 29 and 35 says, and she conceived again and bare a son and she said, now will I praise the Lord. That's the first time that it is mentioned in the word of God. And therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Judah in reference of what it means is to praised. Praised is what Judah means. She had, as I said, Judah was the fourth son. And she named them according to the state or the place that she was in at the time. Reuben being the firstborn there. And Reuben, the name was simply son, is what he means. Uh, Simon came along and it was because that the Lord had heard her prayer. And so Simon was born and named. And then Levi was born and that meant attached to because she felt all the more closer to Jacob. She, uh, remember her sister was Rachel and Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah. But Leah was able to bear children and so she felt that connection and surely my husband's going to love me more. But then when she got to Judah, uh, I noticed she said, now will I praise the Lord bearing the fourth son here in Judah being named as praise. Amen. Amen. And so she was giving her thank offering. She was recognizing God that this was with her fourth son. and That God was listening. God was hearing her. But we too can find that as we continue in this walk of faith with the Lord, seasons are going to come and go in our Christian lives. There's going to be seasons of relief and deliverance. And then there's going to be seasons of trial and endurance that's going to come. But we need to understand that it is in those times, those trying times, that these are the ones that are preparing us. Amen? They are preparing us for places to go in God that we will never ever be able to reach if we did not go through that season, if we did not go through that trial. Uh, we got to understand that we can get to a place as David was. He said in Psalms 57, he said, my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is is fixed. I will sing 
and give praise. That's what David said. He said, my heart is fixed. My heart is established to you, God. It's securely determined to hold on. And so my question is, is yours? Is your heart fixed today? Are you firmly established to God? Are you securely determined that you're going to hold on to God and nothing is going to change your mind? Nothing is going to make you look at anything else, but you want to look at God. Is your heart fixed today? And David said, oh my God, my heart is fixed. And he said, I will sing and I will give a praise. I will give my thank offering unto you. Notice that things and people and events, they're going to come and go in your life. But let us be reminded today, don't lose your praise in the midst of it. Things, uh, we, we might lose them. People will come and go. Events may take place. But don't lose your praise in the middle of it. Don't lose that thank offering and lifting up God and what He has done. It is important that we praise Him now. Because uh, if death should come by and take us, uh, David said in Psalms 115, he said the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. We've got to praise Him why we're here. We got to praise Him now why there's breath in our body. Notice another passage of Scripture said everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. We're going to have to praise Him while we got the breath in our body because we cannot praise Him when we are dead. Isaiah said it like this. I may find my reference. He said it like this in Isaiah 38 and 18. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Oh, we can't do it when we're dead. We can't do it in the grave. You can't give a praise, a thank offering. You can't lift up the name of Jesus. The Bible says the dead do not praise. The grave does not give up anything there. It's not celebrating. But listen, verse 19 says the living, the living. It says it twice. The living, the living. He shall praise thee as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy Truth. Thank God for that verse 19. The living, the living shall praise you. Amen. Because if we don't, the stones are going to cry out, Jesus That's said. Right. And another passage Amen. of Scripture. You know, are you among the living today? Are you among the living? Uh, you might feel like you're void, but you're living. Amen. You're living. Praise the Lord. We might have people come and go. We might lose those things or just be in these seasons and periods. But notice, you are living. You are living. And therefore, you can usher a praise unto God. Because if we don't, Jesus said it like this in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. He said, if you don't, the stones are going to cry out. Let me find my verse here. He said, if I tell them to hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. What's the situation, Sister CJ? Well, why was Jesus speaking this? Well, the disciples were coming back in verse 37, and it said how the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. For all the mighty works that they had seen. I like that. I like that praise with a loud voice. It lets you know when I get excited about the Lord, I get a little bit louder. And actually, I get a little bit faster too, probably. But oh, that we can praise God. And it said there that they were rejoicing and that they were praising God. For what? For all the mighty works that they had seen. Well, guess what happened? You got them Pharisees coming up in verse uh, 39. And the Pharisees, it said, Some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto Jesus, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And Jesus said, No. That's where we picked up that scripture. No, I can't rebuke them. I can't tell them to hold their peace. Because if I do, the stones would immediately cry out the praise. Amen. Amen. That he is so due. Uh, there's always going to be somebody in the crowd trying to stop the praise. Yeah. You're always going to have that Pharisee and that Sadducee standing off to the side. They're always trying to muzzle out the worship. Amen. Because we got to get to this and we got to get to that. But excuse me, sir. And excuse me, ma'am. But were you there in that midnight hour when Jesus came by and delivered my soul when God spoke life unto me and let me know, CJ, you're going to make it. Hold on. Oh, don't tell me I got to be muzzled out. Don't tell me I got to hold my praise. Don't tell me to keep my peace when it's time to give offering unto the Lord and let us praise Him. No, no, we don't want it. 
that way. You got to do it this way. This is the way we've always done it. Oh, but we said right here, let that offering be of our lips. Let it be of a praise. Let it be of going up and telling the great name of God that we serve. Oh, that we started with. Don't lose your praise, folks. Don't lose your praise no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through. It's not always going to be like this. You don't know when the sun's going to rise and today's going to be your new day. Today's going to be your different day. Praise the Lord. The sun's going to rise again. Amen. you got to hold on, but don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. Remember that your worship is your submission to the obedience of the Lord. He wants us to praise Him. He wants us to lift up His holy name. He wants us to be that living testimony before this lost and dying and ungodly world that we're living in day by day. Oh, but He said there, a praise to God continually. Sacrifice a praise to God continually. And that is with the fruit of your lips, as we read in Hebrews, giving thanks to His name. Your worship is your submission to the obedience of God. And you know, there's some things that's going to have an effect on you. And I say an effect, not an effect, because a effect, and A-F-F-E-C-T, is what's going to try to have an influence on you. It's going to try to affect you. It's going to try to influence you. And there are things that was going to come that is going to try to affect your hope. Yes. Your hope. Yes. yes. There's a hope. Your hope is an expectation of a future good. You you got a hope, a confident expectation in eternal salvation. Those of us that are saved. I'm expecting to go to heaven if I live according to the word of God. I've repented and got what I've known under the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, why wouldn't I? Yes. If I'm walking in the way and living in the way. But things will try to come and influence my hope that I have. Amen. In that future good, in that eternal salvation. But your hope, brothers and sisters, sinner friend, your hope has got to be in God first and foremost. Yes. Romans says it like this now the God of hope. Woo! Yes. He is a God of hope. Yes, he is. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound. In hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's Amen. the word of God. It didn't say spirit. It said Holy and Ghost. Ghost. That the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing right. that ye may abound yes. in hope. You know what abound means? It means that you exceed. It means you overflow with it. Yes. In hope, in your expectation, in your confident expectation of who you serve. Because the God of hope is your source yes. of hope. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. Amen. Things are going to try to influence your hope. And once you got your, your eyes set on that prize, you can make it. No matter how dark the way may seem, don't lose your praise. Again, as I said earlier, these trying times are the ones that are preparing you yes. for the next place that God's got. Things will try to come and try to affect or have an influence on your joy. Oh, yeah. People don't like other people being happy for some unknown oh, reason. Yes. Yes. It's okay if I'm happy, then you can be happy. Yeah. But if I'm not happy, you ain't going to be happy. Yeah. All those things will try to come and affect. They will try to influence your joy. You know what joy is? It's gladness. Yes. Gladness. And you know what I found in the Word of God? I find that God's joy is what is our strength. That's what the Bible said in Nehemiah. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what he said. It said that the joy, the gladness of the Lord is your strength, your refuge, your protection, your fortified place. And I tell you what, God is well pleased with us. It said sacrifices of God. He is well pleased. That means he is glad. That means he is is joy. Yes. yes he and we is. can find that strength in Him. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Things will try to come and zap it. Like I said, 
Folks nowadays, if they're not happy, they don't want to see you happy. Don't be coming around here with this happy little attitude. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Jesus has done too much for me. You're just yeah. going to have to get out of the mother grubs. Don't lose Praise. your praise. In the midst of what you're going through, don't lose your praise. It said, let us offer sacrifices of praise to God continually. Amen. Amen. Whether it's just lifting up your hand, whether it is coming out your mouth, we need to not lose our praise unto God. There's going to be those things that come and try to touch our hope and try to affect our joy. And you know what else? There's going to be those things that try to influence our faith in God. Our relationship with God. You know what that is? That is your conviction of the truth. Your relationship unto God is your conviction of the truth. Jesus told the disciples as they passed back through that fig tree. Remember Jesus was hungry? Yeah. And, and the fig tree was showing a false advertisement. Yeah, we got those in the church too. That's a yeah. whole other message. But that fig tree was just uh, <laughs> blooming out with all them green leaves and looking like it was bearing some fruit. And Jesus went up to it and there wasn't a thing on it to eat. Yeah. And Jesus cursed it. Well, the next day they were coming back through and the fig tree that Jesus had cursed had withered up. And the disciples began to look and was wondering about that thing. And Jesus answered them and said unto them, Have faith in God. Because you can portray, you can be a false advertisement all you want, but when Jesus comes knocking on your door, He's looking for the fruit. Are you going to bear the fruit? Are you going to have that fruit? I'm talking about don't lose your praise. And Amen. I'm sad to say that we go to church and we don't have no worship. We ain't going to bear no more fruit in our lives. We're not going to set the fruit of our lips. He's looking for the fruit of our lips. Don't lose your praise. Don't be a false advertisement. Don't be that way with like the fig tree when Jesus comes by and passes your way and He sees no fruit. I'm talking about the one that we got to have faith in God. The one that is able to calm the storm. Remember the disciples were just so amazed. How does this man get up here and speak to the winds and to the seas? I'm talking about the one that speaks and things happen. I know lots of people that speak a lot of things. Get real loud. Get them whatever they want. And nothing happened. Amen. I'm talking about the one that is encouraging us today. Don't lose your praise in the midst of what you're going through. Yes, those things will be out there to influence you. It will be out there to try to sap away and tear away and eat away at all those things God is building up in you. Building up that most holy faith. Building up the, the hope that He's gave unto you. Building up your joy. Jesus said that you know He wanted our joy to be full. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your thanks unto God. Don't lose your confession of who He is and what He has done. Amen. In your life. That's right. I get battled too. People don't want to hear you. Oh, here she goes again. You know, that, uh, that's always in the back of my mind. Why? Because people have done it to me. Right. Be careful when you talk to somebody. Because those things stay in the back of their mind as they're trying to obey God. And it's in the back of their mind. I'm just trying to obey you, Lord. I don't want to wear my brother's and sister's patience. I'm just trying to obey you, Lord. Don't lose your praise, folks. Don't lose your praise of what God has done and who He is and what He's done in your life. Regardless of how many times you confess it that He's healed you. Regardless of how many times because they, they can see you now, amen, and know what you went through. God is working some testimonies, some awesome, tes awesome testimonies in our lives, amen, amongst our brothers and sisters in Christ. And you just wait till God when He gets done and He just lets them shine before us. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Why? Because they never lost their praise. They never lost their praise in the midst of it. It brings us uh, to allowing these things things, if we're not careful, it will affect our praise. It will influence our praise if we're not careful. If it can attack our, our hope, if it can attack our joy, if it can attack our faith, it will surely come after our praise. You just, well, just hold on. But I tell you what, what we read there in Hebrews, it said there that let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of your lips. I don't want to be a false advertisement. I don't want to just put on the look that I'm a Christian yes. and, and, and be careful what I say say around certain people. No, I'm not a false advertisement. I want to be the real deal. I want people to be able to bear that witness as those brothers were saying. I want to be able to
to bear witness with people. Amen. I want that thing. Praise the Lord. People should know and God's Spirit will speak to us and He'll let us know who is of Him and who is not. But it said, let it be our fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Offer a sacrifice of praise. Woo! Let that praise come forth out of you. Oh, as you know, as you know this fact right here, that those things that have come to try you, listen now, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of the message because we got just not very much time left. But when you realize those influences have come in to your life that have tried to affect and tear down your hope in God, your joy in God, your faith in God, and now it's attacking your praise in God. When you understand and that you know that these influences have come and they have tried you and they have tried to eat at you and they have battled at you, but let me tell you something, they did not succeed. Amen. They right. did That's not right. succeed. You might got the scars, you might have the memories, you might still be having some of the, the, the after effects of what you've been through, but those things did not succeed. Don't lose your praise. Praise the Lord. Your praise did not waver at the threat of the battle. Woo! It did not waver at the threat of the battle. Even in the heat of the battle, Amen. it did not succeed. It did not accomplish what that old devil, what that old enemy of your soul, it did not accomplish what he was wanting it to accomplish. All it did was drive you closer to God. Yes, Woo! Amen. Those influences amen. that try to come to separate us. Amen. Paul spoke about it. He told us all oh, a whole list of things. And he said, what I didn't cover, those things that's going to come. <laughs> but nothing shall separate you. Those influences are there trying to tear at us every day. But notice they didn't succeed. They didn't succeed. And so when you start thinking about, oh God, how He kept you. Oh God, how He hurt you. Oh, I'm telling you what, there's something that should be starting to stir down in the belly of your body. Praise the Lord. That's going to just come forth out of you and to the point you ain't even got no control. You just don't even know if you should hoop, holler, scream, praise Jesus. All right, run. I mean, it's just all over you. Your praise is just all over you. You don't even know how to let it out, but you just want to praise Jesus. Don't lose your praise when you realize the influences and the forces of hell have came against you, but they have not succeeded. Amen. I'm talking about yes, don't lose yes. your praise when yes. you realize that God has kept you and God will keep you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God even when it looks like I'm outnumbered. That's right. By, the, by this natural eye. Yes. When it looks like I'm outnumbered by this natural eye. I'm reminded of this story that I heard as a young convert. And I'm just so glad that I did because it has been just an amazement to me. That good old Jehoshaphat. When he went out there and those other uh, nations were coming against him. And realized well, we're small. We're small Lord. But I tell you what. He went and he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord told him to appoint him some singers unto the Lord. Amen. That should praise the beauty of holiness is what the Bible says. You can go to 2 Chronicles 20 and find out. And in verse 22 it says, And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord. And oh, when they began to sing and to praise. Notice there. So because not all of us can sing. You know, I try every now and again. But maybe I can praise. Oh, and when you begin to sing and when you begin to praise. Amen. It said, the Bible said the Lord said in ambushments against the enemy. And that encourages me to not lose my praise. Even when it looks like I'm outnumbered. Even when it looks like I'm the only one that's standing. Even when it looks like, you know, nobody else really cares about what's going on. We're going to turn a blind eye. We're just going to remain silent. You know, and some of us going on about this gender thing. Oh, help us, Jesus. But oh, I told him, I said, some of us. Oh, you might get quiet. Some of you might feel like, oh, I don't, I just don't want to get into it. But I'm going to try to put it on there. I said, but some of us are going to stand. Some of us are going to speak the truth. Some of us are going to tell you, you're going to have a battle on your hand. Not all of us is just going to lay down and accept it. Uh, I, I thought about how people say, don't judge me. God's going to be my judge. Well, let me put this here. If that don't scare you, something's wrong with you. Yeah. You make that statement and you don't have no fear 
something's wrong with you. And when you don't want God's people to tell you that your lifestyle and what you're doing is wrong and that sin is not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, but God is going to be your judge and you have no fear, something is wrong with you. Amen. Woo! Come on, get yeah, preach. Something is preach. wrong with you. And you know that you're wrong. You'll call on everybody else to pray. Uh-huh. But don't uh-huh. you touch me. Amen. Don't you tell me how I live because God's going to judge me. You better fear God. Amen. Yeah, He's going to judge you. But you know what? He's going to judge us preachers and us teachers and us examples. He's going to judge all us Christians that allow these folks to come in our lives and we just pat a can. Pat him on the head. And you know what? That was a soul that you just let go out to an eternity in hell. Amen. Because you don't want to engage in the battle. I'm talking about don't lose your praise. But you know what? In order to sometimes get there, you're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to stand up. And Jehoshaphat, he stood up. And and I can imagine, and I, I told this to a youth class one time, the Lord brought it to me like this. Can you imagine all the men in valor? All armed up and all these armies ready to go to battle with Jehoshaphat. And they got the rogue Levites out there. By the sea. <laughs> Don't Hallelujah. have a sword, Hallelujah. a spear, a shield. And what is this coming at us? And I'm all garbed up, helmet and shield, got my knife, got whatever. And you're coming at me, I guess, in my imagination, in a choir robe. Okay? <laughs> what are you going to fight with? Uh, uh, Lord. They come in the name of the Lord because they were beginning to sing and praise God. And God fought that battle. But I thought about that thing. I wonder what those folks thought. <laughs> oh, those, those that enemy. What in the world is this? Well, how are you going to even fight? Watch this. Praise the Lord. Even when the enemy is encamped about you, God can turn it around. Amen. Even when it looks like you're outnumbered, like I said earlier, don't lose your praise. Because He's always on time. Amen. Yes, he is. Psalm says He may not come when you want Him. Amen. But He'll be there right on time. Amen. He may not come when you want Him. But He'll be there right on time. Don't Amen. lose your praise. Yes. Don't lose your praise. Even if you lose some friends along this way. Even if you lose some loved ones along this way. Even if you lose faith in people along this way. You might even lose some blessings along this way. You might even lose some things along this way. But don't lose your praise. Hallelujah. Don't lose your praise. Yes. Don't lose your worship. Don't lose your hope of an eternity to spend with God. It is your strength in His joy. Praise the Lord. And it's what you believe in and who you believe in that is your faith. Don't lose your praise. People are going to come and go. Things are going to happen. Oh, but you ain't got to lose your praise in the midst of it. Oh, we thank God for the time that He's gave us this morning. And like I said, I was hoping that at the top of this hour at noon time that you're going to feel different than when we first started. Don't lose your praise. Woo! No matter what comes your way, in that dark midnight hour, the sun is going to shine again. And guess what? It's going to be a new day. Right, Brother Donald? As he's getting ready to come on for you for Christ. Well, we just appreciate the good spirit of the Lord. And we just thank God for helping us today. Yes, yes. Don't lose your praise in the midst of whatever you're going through. In Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in.